to the Just-in-Time CME, a video education resource hosted by Children's Hospital and Medical Center and the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Today's video concerns the management of a newborn found to have sickle cell disease on its newborn screening test. Per the CCME guidelines for enduring web materials, the release, review, and expiration dates listed here, this video is part of a research project supported by a grant from the Genetic Services Branch of the Maternal and Child Health Bureau. The project was approved by the Institutional Review Board of the University of Nebraska Medical Center and Children's Hospital and Medical Center. Children's Hospital is accredited by the Nebraska Medical Association's Commission on Medical Education to provide continuing medical education for physicians. Children's Hospital designates this activity for one half hour of Category 1 credit. Please note, you may watch this video as many times as you would like, however you may claim CME credit for it only once. I'm Dr. James Harper. I'm a pediatric hematologist and consultant to the Nebraska Newborn Screening Program. My email address is listed here in case you have questions later. I have no pertinent disclosures. The objectives are listed here. First is to inform you of the proper steps to obtain confirmatory data needed to uh, properly establish a diagnosis. Second, to provide you data regarding common genetic counseling issues arising from this diagnosis, and then to provide you information regarding the clinical uh, guidance for the family and initial management for these infants. The newborn with sickle cell should be alerted to, to you with the following patterns. Newborn screening reports will list FS, FSC, or E, uh, FSA refers to a, uh, a sickle beta thalassemia syndrome, as we'll mention later. These are uh, the common interpretations of these number of these uh, reports. FS is related to either homozygous sickle cell or sickle beta zero thalassemia. FSA is related to sickle beta plus thalassemia, in which a small amount of, a, of normal adult hemoglobin is made. Uh, FSC is a double heterozygote condition known as hemoglobin SC disease. Critical issues to address now. These babies, unlike many of the other uh, hemoglobinopathy reports you receive, have an important health problem and their needs must be met urgently. They and their families need a medical home. They need to have their diagnosis confirmed and treatment needs to be started promptly. Because of the urgency of which this diagnosis needs to be confirmed and treatment needs to be started, in the case of a baby whose parents are non-compliant, it is okay to have CPS or local law enforcement involved in order to facilitate the prompt treatment of this child. These families will need a referral to a pediatric hematologist and their referral needs to be for the next available appointment. This is a screening algorithm published by the American College of Medical Genetics. At this point, the newborn has already had a newborn screen. In Nebraska, the newborn screen is by isoelectric focusing. At the point you will receive this information, the baby needs to have a CBC and needs to have penicillin started. The baby's diagnosis needs to be confirmed by an alternative method. In Nebraska, HPLC as well as DNA studies are available. HPLC is the most commonly used uh, confirmatory test. Once the data is confirmed, as you see, the workup uh, is relatively straightforward. These children all need to be seen by a hematologist. FSA is different from a report of FAS. FAS is sickle cell trait and requires little or no care from a hematology perspective. FSA is hemoglobin S beta thalassemia syndrome. The difference between the two is that the child with S beta thalassemia will have sickling problems and will require a hematologist. The genetics for sickle cell are important. There are three common uh, conditions that we encounter. The first couple, uh, listed under one, 
is a classic uh, 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 double uh, condition where both parents have a heter carrier state, and thus they have a 50% chance of having a child who also is a carrier, a 25% chance of a child with the disease, and a 25% chance that their next child will have be normal. Uh, this is standard Harvey uh, Weinberg uh, kinetics. Couple number two is a condition in which one of the parents has sickle cell disease and the other has trait. And this is a situation where the controlling determinant uh, for trait versus uh, disease is which gene the uh, child inherits from the non-affected parent. And this is a situation in which 50% risk of the subsequent child having disease and a 50% chance that the child will have trait. There is zero chance their child will be normal. Couple number three is an interesting problem. They each have a heterozygote state, but for opposite, uh, uh, for other uh, conditions. Uh, for example, uh, the mother in this case has sickle cell trait, and the father perhaps has hemoglobin C trait. While neither of them are affected, there is a 25% chance that their child inherits both the uh, abnormal genes and thus has the double heterozygote condition hemoglobin SC disease. There is a 50% chance that their next child will inherit one or the other, but not both. And there's a 25% chance their next child would inherit both of the normal genes. This is the ACT sheet from the American College of Medical Genetics. You may have received this from the newborn screening program. As you'll see, the newborn ACT sheet has a diagnosis FS printed in the way you would receive the report. And again, related to homozygous sickle cell disease or sickle beta zero thalassemia. The differential diagnosis is listed here and a description of the condition is here. The steps you should take now are listed here. Diagnostic evaluation and clinical consideration are here. Additional references are listed here. Things to do now. First, contact the family to inform them of the screening result. Second, consult a specialist in hemoglobin disorders such as myself and refer if needed. Third, evaluate the infant and assess for existing splenomegaly, do a CBC with mean corpuscular volume and reticulocyte count, and then order a hemoglobin profile analysis. In Nebraska, this can be arranged through the Nebraska Regional Lab with the order hemoglobin confirmation dash newborn. Next, initiating daily penicillin VK at a diagnosis of 125 milligrams by mouth twice daily and folic acid supplements in the newborn period, 400 micrograms orally daily is adequate. As a child gets older, this do these doses will change. Next is to educate parents and it, their care, child's caregivers, babysitters, grandparents, and so on, regarding the risks of infection and the need for urgent evaluation for fevers of 38.5 centigrade or 101 degrees Fahrenheit um, or signs and symptoms of splenic sequestration. We'll discuss these later. And then finally, report the results to the newborn screening program in your state. Splenic enlargement is rare in the newborn at rest. Um, if you consider this cartoon as a uh, cartoon of the abdomen, frequently the liver will be at the right costal margin or slightly below. The spleen is usually either not palpated or is palpated only slightly below the left costal margin. When the spleen is fully engorged and is uh, enlarged massively, it forms a pattern rather like a hockey stick with extension towards the pelvic inlet and also deviation towards the umbilicus. The uh, most uh, facile way I have uh, found to begin to feel these is to place my fingers at a place above the uh, pelvic uh, inlet where the star is located and then to make 
uh, slight indentations and a brushing like movement to try to bring my fingers up against the edge of the spleen. The spleens float in the abdomen unless they're massively enlarged and thus they can push away from the fingers if too much pressure is applied or pressure directly down. Large intestinal gas bubbles can feel like a spleen tip and so feeling the spleen from multiple directions is helpful. The parents can be taught how to feel the spleen and should be told to feel for the spleen tip daily um, when uh, giving a child a bath or changing a diaper, but also to, ch to feel for a spleen if the child looks pale or uh, seems fussy or otherwise abnormal. I demonstrate with their baby. I have them place their fingers on the left side of the abdomen, the pelvic rim, and then with a steady, soft pressure in a uh, uh, stroking motion like painting, um, we have them go up towards the rib cage until they can feel the spleen. Fever and infection. Infection was a significant cause of early childhood mortality in the pre-penicillin era. Penicillin is incredibly important in these children. The infection risk begins at the second month of life when spleen function begins to decline and they have lost their antibodies against pneumococcus they inherited from their mother. Pneumococcus is an incredibly important bacterial threat to these children. Penicillin prophylaxis must not be be interrupted. Uh, penicillin is uh, very, very important. And I advise families that penicillin is as important as food. Um, we also stress the importance of, of getting the Prevnar series as part of the Well Baby Immunization Series, and then also at a later point getting uh, uh, Pneumovax. It's important to remind families to think of all fevers as a potentially life-threatening event. While it's true that sickle cell babies can have colds or other minor infections just like any other child, the difference between a child with sickle cell disease who has sepsis and a child with sickle cell disease who has a viral syndrome are not reliably powerful enough to warrant a cavalier approach um, to workup of a fever. A couple of pointers regarding penicillin. Penicillin VK in solution form is not particularly stable. It has about a two-week shelf life and therefore uh, it means a lot of pharmacy trips. I advise the families to work with a pharmacist at their local drugstore to see if they can work out arrangements for auto refill or other uh, ways of making this easy. Penicillin will need to continue for at least the first six years of life. Influenza is another uh, increasingly important uh, pathogen for sickle cell. All children over the age of six months should be vaccinated. And prior to six months, um, all parents, grandparents, and older siblings, babysitters, should be vaccinated to cocoon the child with immunized people around them. And also, regardless of immunization status of the child, Good hand washing and uh, social isolation techniques should be taught. Pain in sickle cell is more common as you get older. The initial infant will not have pain typically. Sickle cell pain presents most often in the form of dactylitis, which is involving the painful swelling of hands or feet. Children will oftentimes hold their hand or foot motionless and resist moving it. It is more common in the second year of life. Uh, if these symptoms were to occur, the baby's hematologist will start hydroxyurea therapy to try to decrease the amount of pain the child is experiencing. Uh, again, for the newborn parent, this is not a big problem, um, but we always try to make sure the families understand that this is something that will be in the future and that we have a plan for it when it occurs. These children need a medical home. Medical homes often used as a buzzword. This is not the case for this child. These people need a 24-hour day, a seven-day week um, contact source because they have a lot of emergencies and they have a lot of illnesses that pop up and late at night and so on. 
So I always try to get them plugged into a medical home, either through our clinic or through their primary care physician, um, because it's important for the family to have a phone call to make for them to receive uh, emergent care as needed. Parents should be instructed to call as needed. They should also be encouraged to call so that they understand that this isn't going to cause uh, ill will or, or uh, be seen as uh, inappropriate. Um, parents should call for a temperature of 101 or more as this baby will need to be seen urgently. They should be able to be instructed to call for pain or swelling of the hands and feet because of the possibility of onset of dactylitis. Diarrheal illnesses or refusal to take oral liquids can result in dehydration for these children, which can Im increase their sickling and cause uh, more difficulties. And therefore, these illnesses should be seen uh, with respect to, main to monitoring hydration status. Um, and then I also tell families to call as needed. And the reason I do that is the symptoms for a severe infection uh, or pain are often quite misleading um, in terms of their mildness or their vagueness uh, until the uh, event is full blown. Uh, families who watch their child every day uh, oftentimes pick up on these mild symptoms and uh, they need to be in, uh, asked to uh, call quickly. So in summary, FS, FSA, FSC, FSD, and FSE are the reports for clinically significant sickle cell syndromes. Confirmation of this finding is required. Hemologic referral is also required, and genetic counseling for the families is recommended. Penicillin and folic acid must start uh, promptly. Prevnar, which is normally part of the primary immunization series, should be included. And Pneumovax should be started at age two or six months after the final Prevnar. Sickle cell patients have a lot of emergencies, so plan ahead for these and establish a medical home for them. Thanks.